There are a number of important reasons to breastfeed your little one. Breast milk offers a perfect nutritional balance, including protein, carbohydrates, fat, and other nutrients. In forms, a baby's digestive system can easily break down and process. Breast milk is truly the ideal food for your baby. Human milk also contains natural antibodies that help protect your baby by building a healthy immune system. When you first begin breastfeeding, it's a new skill for both mom and baby. Successful breastfeeding is the result of patience, practice, and proper positioning. But once you learn the basics, it can become an easy and natural activity that you'll both look forward to. It's also a wonderful opportunity for you to bond with your little one. Before you begin breastfeeding, please remember that whatever you eat can affect your baby. You will want to limit how much caffeine and alcohol you drink, and you may want to avoid the foods that make you feel gassy. Please talk with your health care provider about any prescription or over-the-counter medications you're taking. Also, if you're breastfeeding twins, please speak with your health care provider about special techniques. Let's take a moment now to watch our nurse practitioner, Lori, as she helps a mom and her newborn learn the correct positions and techniques for successful breastfeeding. The position you're in right now is called cradle arm position. Of course, it's good for holding, but it's also very good for nursing. The difference is you're going to have her tummy to tummy because you want her nice and close so that she's not tugging on your breast. Mm -hmm. Some of the other positions, one that's really good, especially for... Um, Moms who've had a C-section because it helps to protect your tummy. It's also good for moms who have twins because they can nurse from both sides. But it's called the football position. You're going to hold the baby um, next to your hip and support her with your elbow. And then the head's going to be supported with this hand. The thing that's nice about this position is it really gives you free use of your hands and to be able to move the baby around where you need her to go. One of the other positions that you can use is called cross cradle. So basically, it's the position that you're in. But when you're going to switch to the other side, all you're going to do is kind of slide the baby across your chest, okay? You want to keep her tummy to tummy and then bring her up to the other side. There's also the sideline position for nursing. Sideline position works really great at nighttime, um, especially when you and baby are tired. Um, you'll be laying down in a bed, um, laying on your side. Your arm just comes up underneath your head. You're going to lay the baby next to you. Again, you want to use that tummy-to-tummy -tummy position so that she's right up next to you. Should we go ahead and try and latch her on? Sure. Then as you bring the baby closer to your breast, what you want to do is utilize what's called the rooting reflex. Rooting reflex all babies have. It's that point where you go ahead and you kind of stroke their lips and their cheek and they'll kind of follow along. That's what we call the rooting reflex. And that's what you want to do to help latch the baby onto your nipple. Because what will happen is she's going to open up really wide when you do that. And as she opens up wide, you're going to bring her in and then have her latch on. Just rub your nipple across her lips. And then as she opens her mouth, then you'll bring her in. And just like that. Now, as she sucks, she'll suck and suck, you know, three or four times, and then you'll hear her swallow. And that way you know that she's uh, starting to get milk. Now, as you look at her position on your breast, you notice that her lips are kind of phalanged out. Mm -hmm. And that's good positioning. You also notice that she takes in as much of the nipple and the brown part of your nipple, the areola. That way you know she's taking the nipple to the back of her mouth and then puts more pressure on the back part of your breast here, yeah. as opposed to the tip of the nipple. She will uh, start to slow down as she starts to empty this breast. The thing is, you want to try to empty each side. Um, you may not empty both sides. At the end, you're going to get um, the good milk or the cream, the stuff that is high in fat, and that's what you really want her to get to, okay? So that's what's going to put the weight on her. As she goes to slow down, sometimes babies will let go of themselves, uh, sometimes not. It's not a good thing to just go ahead and pull a baby off because you could cause damage to your nipple. And you want to try to preserve them as much as possible. It's one of the number one reasons a lot of moms will give up on breastfeeding is sore nipples. How do I know when to switch? 
As she starts to slow down, you think she's finished on this side, then you want to take her off and switch her to the other side. But to do that, you don't just want to pull her off. So what you want to do is go ahead and take your finger and place it in the corner of the baby's mouth and just release the suction. As she releases the suction, then, then just let the baby settle back into your arm. This is also a good time to try and get her to wake up to take the second side. When you're first starting off with nursing, a lot of times um, babies will get really sleepy when your milk first comes in because they get very satisfied very quickly. But as you continue to nurse, they'll tend to be more awake for the second side than she is right now. Okay. But you always want to offer the second side. Sure. You always want to stimulate both sides. Now you're going to alternate your starting sides. And the way you can try to help remember, some people will take either a ribbon or a safety pin and then just put that on the strap of the side that they left off on. That tells them or reminds them that that's the side they want to start on. Sounds great. Should we go ahead and latch her on this side? Sure. Would you like to use a different position? Um, I'd like to try the football hold. Okay. To place her in the football hold, you're going to tuck her hips right in next to yours. Make sure that you have her head supported with your hand. Oh, I sort of have an awkward time with this side. I want to know if I'm doing it correctly. You will find a lot of babies will prefer one side over the other, and that's not unusual. You're not abnormal at all. <laughs> you always want to make sure that you're bringing baby to the breast and not you to the baby. So a lot of times using the, you know, the cross cradle position or the football hold on this side would probably be better because she still has this cheek up against your breast. Perfect. Good job. You want to try to nurse your baby at least anywhere between 8 to 12 times in a 24-hour period. So about every 2 to 3 hours. If um, she's asleep during the day, it doesn't mean she's not hungry. So you may want to try to stimulate her, try to wake her up. It's good to sometimes have them in the same room with you, like in a bassinet. Then you can watch them and watch for the times that they're most easily awakened. If she starts to root around on her hands, those are times when it's going to be the easiest to wake a baby up. If you attempt to try to wake her up and she just won't do it, lay her back down for a while and try again about a half hour later. In the middle of the night, should I wake her up or should I let her sleep a little bit longer? You can let her sleep a little bit longer at night. Um, usually within the first couple of weeks, though, they usually recommend to try to wake up about every three hours. Okay. How much weight should she be gaining? It's not unusual for a baby in the first few days of birth to lose up to 10% of their birth weight. After that, they will start putting on uh, three to four ounces a week. By the time they're two weeks old, they're going to be back to their birth weight. Um, by the time they're about six months old, you'll see that she's probably doubled her weight. And then by the time she's a year, probably tripled her weight. If there's any concern about her weight during her well baby checkups with your health care provider, he or she will let you know if she does have concerns about her weight. How do I know when she's getting enough to eat? One of the most obvious signs that your baby's getting enough to eat is she's going to be very satisfied after a feeding. She's going to be more comfortable with you. She's not going to be crying. The other thing that you're going to watch for are wet diapers and bowel movements. Um, within a 24-hour period, you want to see anywhere between six to eight wet diapers. 